Hello and welcome to a new DIY engineers video. In this video I'll cover how to use the Raspberry Pi 5 along with the Coral USB accelerator. I'll show you how to run image classification Python programs from Coral AI which is used to recognize the subject and the image. I'll show you how to find other models and label files which are used to to actually run the programs and those will be the main examples. I'll also briefly just mention how to find other details from other Python programs from Coral AI such as object detection which is used to recognize the subjects on an image, semantic segmentation which identify the individual pixels that belong to different objects in an image, post estimation which is used to identify the position of several points in the human body, and even audio classification which is used to recognize sounds or spoken words and phrases. Now how to actually get it to work under a Raspberry Pi 5? A very important part of getting the Coral TPU USB accelerator to work on the Raspberry Pi 5 is using Docker. The reason is that the Raspberry Pi 5 comes with the latest operating system which currently is PyOS 12 or Bookworm. This version of PyOS comes with Python 3.11 by default so that's where the issues really start. The Coral Pi Coral library only runs on Python 3.9, so your options then are running it inside of Docker with an earlier version of Debian, which comes with Python 3.9, or simply to install an older Raspberry Pi operating system in your Pi, which we might not really want to do. We might still want to use a Raspberry Pi for other things, so it doesn't make sense to downgrade the whole Pi just so that you can run your Coral TPU. So let me explain Docker in super simple terms. So what Docker is going to enable us to do is basically we have here or Raspberry Pi 5. That's Raspberry Pi 5 is running Pi OS as its operating system on top of it. Then we're going to install Docker within that operating system. And then we're going to create a container within Docker. Here's the container. And that container will have Debian 10. That's its OS that will enable us to run Python 3.9. Now, what this does is, once you enter that container, you have your own isolated operating system on Debian running Python 3.9. And once you exit it, you can run, go back to your normal Raspberry Pi and run your normal stuff with the rest of your programs or whatever you have installed on your normal operating system, which runs the later version of Python. You can even create as many containers as you want you can choose to add other things in them and keep them totally isolated, which is the cool part about Docker. Now, this is not meant to be a comprehensive Docker tutorial, but just wanted to provide the background as to why we're doing it inside of Docker for the Raspberry Pi 5. So hopefully that helps. Now, before we start, let's just go ahead and talk about the steps that we're gonna follow to get this thing to work. So our first step will be to install Docker and we'll install the Edge TPU runtime on your Pi. Then we'll check the parameters of connected USB devices, create and build the Docker file, and then begin running XM. All right, so let's jump into setting up Docker on the Raspberry Pi 5. All right, so before we start, remember, I am running a Raspberry Pi 5 with Pi OS 12, Pi OS and 64-bit, and that's Debian bookworm. So right now I'm running a Raspberry Pi 5 with nothing installed on it. This is newly flashed SD card. This is the operating system for March 15, 2024. So we'll start with opening the command terminal and typing in several commands. So let's do that. Now to open the terminal, just simply go ahead and click over here. That'll open it up. Now we'll be typing several commands into the terminal, so it will be probably easiest if you go to my blog post, diyengineers.com, and copy and paste the commands from there. So for example, this is really what we're going to start with. If you just come here and copy and paste the commands, it'll be a lot easier. So I'll be showing you by copy and pasting from here, and you'll see how it goes. But again, it's easier if you go to the blog post at diyengineers.com. I'll link that in the description. Um, that'll make your life easier. All right, let's get back to the terminal. So we'll start with this first set of commands. And we'll let that run and we go running echo on the next set done then install the docker packages so that is the sudo app get install docker ce etc do you want to continue yes all right now that that is done, go ahead and run sudo docker run hello world. That will test, confirm that we installed the docker successfully. 
as you could see at first it said it was unable to find the image locally it went ahead and pulled the library pulled it adjust status downloaded newer image hello world and then it runs and says hello from docker this message shows that your installation appears to be working correctly to generate this message docker took the following steps and then it tells you what it did to try more something more ambitious you can run an ubuntu container uh, share images of automated workflows etc stuff you can do more with docker right but this shows that so far we successfully installed docker so next we'll go to the next step which is installing the HTPU runtime on your pi all right so to do that we copy the commands so first we'll add the debian package repository onto the raspberry pi 5. all right so that's done and then we'll install the HTPU runtime so we do sudo app get install lib HTPU std all right so that's done so now we'll connect the usb accelerator into the computer with the provided usb 3.0 cable and make sure to plug it in the usb 3.0 terminal so that's the one with the blue on the raspberry pi if you already plugged it in remove it and replug so that the newly installed udev rule can take effect so i'm going to do that now all right and so next we're just going to go ahead and reboot the raspberry pi so We'll close this and we'll reboot. All right, and we're back. So now we open again the terminal. And the next step we're going to do is run the command ls USB. So this is going to list all USB devices. These are basically your typical ports. And then you can see this 1A6E089A global unit chip core. That's not what we want to see so let's continue and then we'll do what we need to get it right so the output we actually want to see for the device we connected is 18d1 and then 9302 google inc so to actually see that we're going to have to run the example at least once and then check again such that the device gets linked with the pi and then we can actually do it the right way don't ask me why i hope it worked the first time but let's go ahead and create the docker file so first we're going to have to go to a folder in the pi and create create the following folder so we're in pi we're going to create a new folder called docker go into docker I'll create a new folder called this custom imgs and then inside of it create a new folder called deb10 and inside there i'm going to create a new file file name we'll need to have the name of docker file Click OK. Double click to open. And then we'll go ahead and enter the contents. You can go to diyengineers.com to get the, the specific info to be entered. But that's basically going to be your Docker file that is run to create your image in Docker. So let me go ahead here. We'll remove all these indentations. And then just go ahead and save. And you can close that. So we're back at the terminal. And you're going to change directory with CD say docker slash custom imgs slash dev10 and that takes us to the folder that we just created and then we're going to run sudo docker build because we're building the image space minus t and then you'll write the word coral dot so sudo gives you the permission to to run this command docker since we're running docker build since we're building an image off of the existing docker file and that the t tag is basically to define the tag which we're then specifying as coral which is this so with that we can hit enter what did i do wrong one sec the issue was the space after the dot you shouldn't have any issues if you copy and paste it from the the blog post all right so we're done building the image so next we're going to run the example and we should get an error because we were not getting the right usb device like i mentioned earlier but we'll fix that by first running it and then rerunning it so first we'll go and run sudo docker run it device we'll pass the device that we're trying to run so you can see this root says that we're inside the docker container that's the info so while inside the container we'll run python 3 which let me just copy and paste the info 
but we have Python 3. We're running, we'll specify where the file is. Then we're running the, the Python code classify image. So it's an image classification code. After that, we will specify the model with the model tag. And this is the mobile net v21, etc. And I'll show you later where to find more of those and uh, what they entail. But you can see here BERT. So we're sorry, had a runtime error because it took forever and it couldn't connect to the device. And that's the error I mentioned earlier. But let me finish explaining. So we have the BERT model, then the labels, which is the labels that we can specify. So in this case, is a bird label file with a bunch of bird names in, in the text file. And then the image that we were going to run, which is was a bird, and it was going to tell us what bird it was. So that's what that was. So now that we had that error, let's exit the container first. So that's with control D. And let's go ahead and run CD to go back to the home directory. And let's run again ls usb. And now we have what we wanted, which was this 18D1 9302 Google Inc. If we go back and rerun uh, Docker, so we're inside the container. And we rerun the example we wanted to do. So Python 3. With the classify image and the bird info, etc. Think for a little bit and then it'll tell us the output. So it thinks with a 44.14 certainty that it's a black capped chickadee and with a 29.29% .29 certainty that it's a Carolina chickadee. So we can Google those and take a look to compare. Uh, so first let's look at the image and then let's compare versus what Google shows for both of those. So let's take a look at the image that was used for this analysis. So here it is. You can see the bird. And then we'll go to Google to look up images of the two that, that the AI thought were the right ones. So here's the black capped chickadee. And you can see here's the image. You can see they have plenty of similarities. Maybe not this one, but this, if you look at this, right, the image we did, and then you'll look at this one. They're pretty similar. I mean, they're not exactly. That's why the result was a 44.14%. They didn't say it was exactly the same, but it was very close. If you look at the Carolina Chickadee, you can then see it's a little bit different, but even in this too, it's similar enough to where like 29% certainty makes sense. All right. Let's continue with another example. So now we're going to run the same example, but with the image of a parrot. So copy and paste the code, run it. And those are the results. So 69, sorry, 67.97% Scarlet Macau, and then another 12.1% for the Crimson Rosella. So similarly, let's go ahead and look at the, the test image and see what Google has. All right, so here's the Scarlet Macaw, and we can see the actual image we were testing. I think it's pretty similar, so that makes sense with the 60, almost 68%. And if we look at the other one, it's a little bit different. Um, so it makes sense that that one was at 12% roughly. Now, if you go to Coral AI slash model slash image classification, you can see more information on what we just ran, basically. And it also has more models. So... If you recall what we talked before, we were running a model called MobileNet slash V slash, let's see, what was it, slash 100 and then 224, and that would be the bird one. So that's this one. You can see they also have others like insects, plants, etc. And those comes with the model, CPU model, TPU model, TPU model is the one we're using to run on the edge TPU. And then has the labels file which is the file with all the text that tells you the, the different ones. So like, for example, if I click on the bird one and I go to the labels file, here's all the, the list of birds um, that the, the model could potentially identify. I think it said, what, 900, 900 or 1,000, 900 plus birds. So again, if you wanted to, to use it for something else, you could do the insect walk and download the TPU model in the labels file and put it inside your 
your directory inside Docker within your Raspberry Pi such that once you run the classify image Python code, it can access that model and those labels. And the same applies for others. There's others with thousands of objects. Uh, some of them will give you uh, just a, an accuracy like this bird one. It will just tell you the certainty. There are others that will give you the top one of what it's finding. And this will specify the top one, how certain it will be of that top one and the top five, the certainty. Um, and that's what this other box here means. Here you can see the model size, etc. So you can also even go ahead and, and train your, your models. I'm not going to go through that in this video, but just know that that's here. And there's some example codes, right? So we did basic image classification. You could do the same with video and there's a few other things. So right now we just talked through the image classification, but they have a bunch of other models, right? If I click here on models. They have image classification, object detection, semantic segmentation, post estimation, auto classification, which are some of the ones I mentioned earlier, right? If we go to semantic segmentation, that's this basically like you have a, an image and it can identify the pixels that belong to the dog, the bicycle, the person and similar, right? It has similar to what we look for the image classification. It has trained models. You can download the model and the labels file and run it, it has example codes and it can do person segmentation in video, which will look at the body parts or the semantic segmentation of objects within a picture like person and plant. You also have post estimation, like we talked about, as you can see here, it has nodes within the limbs of the body. We have auto classification, and again, all these will have the model and label files. Same thing with this one. And then there's a page here with all models, all put in one single page for each type. And I think I didn't open this one for object detection, but that's this one, right? It'll say person, bicycles, a little bit different than the semantic segmentation. It's a little bit simpler than just going ahead and, and identifying all the pixels. So, so there's more info there. You can download um, the relevant models and labels and, you know, run a ton of other stuff. So now we're back here to our Pi and our terminal to exit. Remember to exit our or doc container, Docker container, just do control D on your computer. And then you're back to your Raspberry Pi. So that wraps up the video. Um, I hope you liked it. If you did, remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.